What's it like to live where you work? For lazy Americans, it's unthinkable. But imagine living and working at one of the biggest factories in the world, a workplace the size of Monaco. For these 17,000 employees, it's reality. They come from all over China, Vietnam, and France to work at this factory called Yupa. Workers craft coffee makers, American flags, and electric grills in staggering quantities every single day. But Yupa is more than a steady paycheck. It's home. People get married here, they learn government propaganda here, and the work never stops. Yupa's managers are on a mission to see just how far they can exploit human labor and bend workers' rights laws to explode China's economy into the realm of complete global takeover. Step behind the closed doors of a factory where everyone wears bright yellow shirts and is shot on sight if they ever wear orange. Welcome to the place that calls itself China Number One. Within the next hour, about eight of Yupa's 17,000 workers will have died from overwork and exhaustion. Every day, Yupa makes 16,000 irons. Every month, Yupa makes about 36,000 coffee makers, which is about one for every Starbucks in a five mile radius. And every year, these laborers produce enough body sweat to quench even the thirst of Shaquille O'Neal. Chances are you own something built in China. Since 2002, China has taken advantage of an incredible system called trade, which allows them to make goods for other countries in exchange for money. These factories are so common in China, there's a saying among the locals which translates to English to mean, I plan to inseminate my factory. Someone has to make sure that the factory's parts are always getting to the right place at the right time. This is Ming Long He. He's been working at Yupa since he was four years old. I am in charge of production control and control of production. If even a single department falls behind, I will be executed, and that is bad. If any of Yupa's factories run out of parts, then that means the Earth has run out of resources, since China is so massive. We steal billions and billions of tons of resources from our dumb planet every single day. There's nothing Earth can do about it. But hey, if we don't, then my job's on the line, and I'd rather not be fired. Today, a problem in the iron department needs ironing out. <laughs> Workers on the iron line are often strong and drunk. Their heads swim with beer and rice wine fumes so that they can ignore their dangerous and unsafe working conditions while handling molten, hot, and bullishly strong metals. Just now, I found out the main problems here at the iron department. One major problem is that these drunkards don't realize that you can make more than just steam irons from iron. Traditional plants use outside suppliers for their components, but not Yupa. They import all of their pieces from the rest of China, meaning their products end up being cheap pieces of shit. But sometimes even the suppliers can be dangerously low on stock. Here, Mr. He and the leader of the iron negotiate a treaty that will provide the iron workers with more booze if they stop eating the tin cans. But now the grill factory is low on a crucial component, enthusiasm. The grill team is notoriously lazy, choosing to only work 12 hours a day, and occasionally taking a Sunday off entirely. Workers make about 50,000 grills every day, or about 200 billion per month when adjusted for space inflation. Grills bring in $69 million a year, which makes Yupa say, nice. There's no wonder that this pissed off guy is so pissed off. Workers on the grill line are also expected to be strong to maneuver around all these heavy parts, so daily strength training, as seen here, is mandatory. Mr. Ye supervises 850 workers, and despite his name, is constantly pissed off. 
It just doesn't make sense to me. Is a hot dog a sandwich or not? No one here will give me a straight fucking answer. Mr. Ye is obsessed with quality control. His strategy? Call competing Chinese factory managers to challenge them to a gunfight over each other's resources. In a factory this big, it's incredible nothing has exploded yet. This is my dinner plate. You notice something? It's fucking empty. Because this worker right here is too much of an incompetent cucksucker to fetch me my dinner. I'm gonna jam these metal brackets into his eyes. These metal brackets are coincidentally used to attach the grill's core heating element to the frame. Mr. Hee has to find a fresh supply of grill parts, or else we'll end up with a lot of blind Chinese people. If I don't get the parts, then these glasses are gonna do fuck all against Mr. Ye's brackets. The first part to arrive to the factory are rifle bullets, loaded into AK-47s for security to use in case they spy any nearby Japanese citizens. The grill plates can also double as a club or a shield should any foreigners try to come to the factory and steal our designs. Power cords are also connected here. Hell, just yank out the wires to the battery! If you aim for the heart, it'll hopefully act like a taser and drop him to the goddamn floor. Here's the main action of the grill. Put the invader's head between the plates and smash it thusly. You can also cook food on the grill if you so desire. On a typical day, for every meal cooked on one of these grills, three people will be beaten to death with one. Missing parts is a big whoopsie-daisy for the factory, and it's up to Mr. He to measure just how much of a shit the company gives that he'll lose his job if he doesn't find them. This sad clip was of Mr. He negotiating rations for his starving family back home. Then, Mr. He heads home to a company-subsidized apartment, just steps away. His wife, Christine Winchester, also works at the factory. And so does his son, Alphabet Soup. His family and in-laws also live here, most not by choice, but it all comes together to help instill a fierce loyalty to the company. I am totally happy living here. It's just the best. I am in no way wanting someone to come and save me and my family. Uh-uh. Coming up in part two, find out what it's like to leave your entire family behind so you can live inside a glorified Ikea.